All right, everyone, it is now 5.05. I would like to officially start our meeting. My name is Ayobami Bell Torrance, and I am the Outreach Manager for DDOT. Thank you all for joining us tonight for our monthly community input meeting. As a special welcome to anyone joining us for the first time, and I'm going to get right to our introductions. And I see that our Executive Director of Transit is on, so I will start with him. Hello, I'm Michael Oglesby, Executive Director of Transit for the City of Detroit. Okay, and then we'll go in no particular order as I see everyone. Uh, Lieutenant Cross. Uh, good evening, Lieutenant Cross and for Chief Ricky Brown, Transit Police. Thank you. Mr. Yamakura. I'm Ricky Amaker. I'm the Capital Projects Manager here at TDAP. Mr. Pashenik? Uh, good evening. I'm Steve Patrick. I'm the Director of Service Development and Security. Mr. Joy? Good evening. Geo Joy, uh, Maintenance Manager at DDAP. Ms. Williams? Hi, I'm Jasmine Williams, Customer Service Supervisor at DDOT. Mr. Barkley? Melvin Barkley, Deputy Director, Operation and Maintenance for DDOT. Mr. Mallet? Good evening, Andre Mallet, Operations. Mr. Wallace? Good evening, John Wallace, Agency CFO, DDOT. Mr. Vincent? Good, e good evening, everyone. Tony Vincent, I'm the Assistant Director of Operations. Ms. Moore. Good evening, Simone Moore, General Manager, Transdale over Detroit Metro Lift. Thank you. Ms. Wimberly. Good evening, I'm Zandra Wimberly, Assistant Director of Administration. Okay, I'm gonna go over to marketing. I think that's, oh, Mr. Zek, excuse me, I see your camera's on. Hello, Richard Zek, Chief Safety Officer, DDOT. Hey, Kristen. Hi, Kristen Lukowski, I'm a member of the marketing team. Uh, Aja. I'm Aja, marketing team. And Kyle. Kyle Jordan, also with the marketing team. Thank you. And I just want to acknowledge our ASL interpreters tonight. Thank you for joining us. It is time now for our meeting rules, which are pretty simple. Uh, you will be allowed two minutes for uh, public comment on that time, and that will be after our presentation. And we do ask that you please respect that time and note that you may be muted for going over. Now, if time allows, you will have another opportunity to speak. As always, no personal attacks or foul language will be tolerated. And as I begin my presentation, I do have a few reminders as well. By participating in the Zoom meeting, you are granting permission for your name, image, and likeness as well as audio and video recordings to be used by DDOT. Now to request to comment, you can simply use the raise hand feature. If you are using the dial in only phone option, enter star nine to serve as that raise hand feature to request to speak or ask a question. You'll also have the ability to submit questions or comments to DDOT staff in the chat and that will be open following this presentation and please limit that also to comments regarding the meeting. Before asking a question or commenting, be sure to unmute your audio, state your name and your organization, and following your comments, please mute your audio. A special thanks to our DDOT passengers, stakeholders, and transit advocates who have provided feedback in the first phase of DDOT Reimagine. Now we are reviewing this information to develop a draft plan that will be shared to the public. 
Now, DDOT expects to provide the draft plan to the public in January. You can learn more about DDOT Reimagine at DetroitMI.gov. That's forward slash DDOT Reimagine. DDOT would like to acknowledge that passengers may have experienced a higher number of bus delays within the last several weeks. Now we are continuously making adjustments and are working to improve your overall riding experience. Uh, please note that a majority of our delays are due to cuts made when we don't have enough operators on the road. And speaking of not having enough operators, DDOT is hiring. But DDOT did recently hire four new team members to assist in servicing our TEOs, that's our operators. 11 students have completed training in the last 30 days, with seven more expected to finish this month. And there are currently 42 students in training, including 18 TEO recruits in the classroom training. DDOT is also hiring nine driving positions, and that includes our safety division that's looking to hire security personnel. Now, for more information about DDOT employment opportunities, feel free to visit DetroitMI.gov, that's forward slash DDOT, or you can use that QR code that you see on your screen. Uh, DDOT is an equal opportunity employer, and I want to give a moment for those who may be seeing that code for the first time if you'd like to uh, scan it. And we'll have the, the uh, link on the... Uh, in the chat later as well. But again, please spread the word, okay? And when it comes to hiring paratransit as well, DDOT is currently hiring for a customer service representatives and dispatchers positions for paratransit. Now these positions are available at DetroitMI.gov, that's the city's website, and interested parties must apply through the city. So again, that's DetroitMI.gov. We will be hosting another uh, meeting regarding the Coolidge replacement project, excuse me, that will take place next week, actually Thursday, October 27th. That will take place at 1230 and be on the lookout for more information, but you can mark the date that's happening next week. Our next local advisory council, the LAC meeting will take place Tuesday, that's November 15th, and that's happening at 10 a.m. And of course, our next community input meeting will take place Thursday, November 17th, same time, 5 p.m. Now that is all the DDOT uh, updates that I have at this time. You can stay connected to us by um, searching on our website, again, DetroitMI.gov forward slash DDOT, and all those upcoming meeting information will be there as well. And you can also follow us on social media. We have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at RideDDOT. I would like to turn it over now to my colleague, Kristen, to call our first person. Uh, the first hand up is a number ending in 294. Okay, we can come back to you. Uh, Tottenham gave me oh. a flyer. Go um, ahead. And, and it's problem with buses after all um, 6 p.m., after all weekends and, and weekends. Was that the end of your comment about the uh, buses after hours? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Mark. Thank you for letting us know. Um, as we talked about earlier, we are working on increasing our staff members for operators. That is currently our issue where we are short operators and we are short operators. We don't have anyone out there for service, but we are working to move operators from different routes to assist so that we can ensure that we have coverage on routes when we have no buses out there. And anytime you have any questions, please call the 933-1300 number and we will go out there so we can keep a log of it. We can send road supervision out there so we can track to ensure that we get service out there to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next hand up is Robert. 
Good evening. Can I be heard? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Robert Pulowski. I'm a Wayne County Youth Council member representing District 15 and a Citizens Advisory Council person for the RTA of Michigan, Southeastern Michigan, uh, also from Southgate and Wayne County. Uh, so a couple small things for you. So uh, this is really geared to the director. Um, I know we have I've heard conversations regarding uh, partnerships with Detroit Public Schools to retain TEOs. Now, the one thing I can make come true with that is the Downriver Career Technical Consortium, which is a career path for high school students. Uh, it's based out of Flat Rock, Michigan, and it basically hits every high school in the Downriver area, including Western areas of Wayne County, which includes Huron Township, and they look for career paths for students. Now, one of the things that really caught my eye was getting DDOT involved with this program. It's a wonderful program. There's plenty of room. You know, it goes from, you know, just regular college classes to whatever you want to pursue in college, just a simple job. And also we're, all, we're possibly looking for a partnership with Southgate Community Schools to do a assembly with uh, possibly more agencies, including DDOT. Um, so I, I just wanted to point that out. I don't know if the director seems interested in that, but I would love to follow up and give you some more information because I know I only got two minutes. Uh, the second thing I want to make note is our drivers. Um, it's all, it's 100 years, so I just wanted to point that out. And the barbecue that we had last year, uh, last month was wonderful. We got to meet so many different drivers uh, and actually celebrate 100 years of DDOT. So thank you to the marketing team. Thank you to Director Oglesbeek for all the work you've done setting that up and just getting us involved again to where we can actually have that person-to-person -person contact uh, again after all these two years. But other than that, those are my comments. I do have one more thing, but I'll try to touch base if I'm still in here and there's some extra time. But as always, thank you again. All right, very good. Thank you very much for those comments. Yes, um, any opportunity to plug in to uh, any consortium that has a, a career path towards public transportation, I'm always in. Um, as you know, the, the age uh, limit for a driver is 18 years old. Um, we are interested in looking into it. So get that information to us. Uh, we're looking at all types of opportunities, internships. We're going to really try to bring this to the next level. So let's take this one and throw it in the mix. Okay, thank you, Robert. Next hand up is Mr. Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. All right. Uh, good evening, Director Oglesby and the staff. Um, my questions are um, in regards to, again, the Metro Lift, the 24 hours in advance, you need to call in in order to uh, get service. Metro Lift is paratransit, Metro Lift. Um, I think there should be more opportunity. They said uh, opportunity, but more opportunity for folks two or three hours in advance if they want to go somewhere, kind of like they do dial a ride in other areas. Um, and of course, after 6 p.m. in a regular DDOT bus, after 6 p.m. on the weekends, the bus service is at its worst. Um, I want to be honorable Michael Oglesby. I talked to Ms. Stephanie today, and I want to know if I could uh, uh, meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, um, anytime, um, et cetera. Uh, I don't know if I have your email address, if it can be put into the chat, um, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I had a pretty good relationship with DDOT all the way back before Dan Dirks. I was curious if uh, you all had met, uh, made any meetings or possible meetings, you, Dan Dirks, and yourself, because he did email you, sir. Um, uh, I was curious about that. Um, and also, uh, D DPS schools. Uh, I'm glad. I, I really, I'm proud of uh, Mr. Pulowski. That's what we need to connect with those young people that some of them are not going to college. And if it's down rivers, anywhere, by any means necessary, we need to get these drivers. Um, 
My hotline number for those that are listening is 313-444-9114. 313-444-9114. Feel free to listen or contact. Um, and I'm just asking everybody to continue to keep me in prayer. My vehicle is still down. I'm leasing one right now. I gave out a bunch of flyers, uh, the virtual meeting flyers, and I take people to go vote for free. Um, so, yeah. Thank you for that, Mr. Cunningham. And that is time. And we do appreciate you. Yep. Um, I'll comment on, uh, on, on a few of those things. So uh, Dan Dirks and I have been playing phone tags. So no, we haven't uh, had an opportunity to talk yet, but I look forward to that fruitful conversation. Um, the the question about Metrolift and the 24-hour uh, situation is pretty standard. And, and Simone knows this, and Mr. Staley, I think, is on also. And typically, when there's a program that allows um, to allows uh, someone to get a ride closer, you know, within two or three hours. It would be based on availability. Um, unfortunately, right now, uh, most of the providers are already having a hard enough time filling the seat with drivers. The driver problem is just not fixed out, <laughs> though it's not touted. Um, so uh, driver availability would be one of the things that we'd look at even after we take it over moving forward. So we're not going to come in and say, okay, we're going to take it over in January. And all of a sudden, uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, make a reservation within 24 hours. We're still going to keep it standard, but we are working on some creative ideas to be able to um, make something come to fruition up to and including taking a look at how a uh, new freedom is structured. So stay tuned. Be patient. We'll see how it goes after January. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Next hand up is Ms. Richella. Good evening, DDOT staffers, Director Osby. Uh, Director Osby, I need to talk with you. Uh, uh, we're trying to get together and have something for Cunningham. Uh, it would be like a buffet at the Motor City Cave, uh, Casino. Uh, nobody has to pay. Maybe just have enough to tip the waiter. But I'd like to talk to you on a time and day maybe that you'll be available for that. Um, I'm quite sure uh, Obama, she has my number and everything. But getting to the point, okay, <laughs> getting to the point about DDOT. Um, why are the shelters and seats being taken down? And as months elapsed before something new was installed, if you want to tear it down, place the new infrastructure in at the same time. And then also as shelters across from each other aren't consistent or spaced near each other. One side has a shelter, the other side has just a seat. Shelters are disappearing without being placed like max size shelter, Van Dyke, just a mere seat. And I've noticed on Grand River, I had a full shelter by the Shell gas station when you get to the other side going west, it's nothing there, but the shelter has been taken down from in front of the Shell gas station and a seat has been replaced there. Um, our next thing is on our pair of transit move. Um, please, is it gonna be uh, anything there where, you know, make sure that the buses are clean? I mean, you know, the transit uh, vehicles are clean, uh, the drivers are courteous, courteous. Because um, sometimes I rode Metro Lift, I do have Metro Lift too, and you know, drivers is not as patient with some of the riders as they should be. Uh, and also, how are you training new and old drivers on good customer service, polite and courteous service? How often? What type of training is it? Do you do role play? And how is it compliant with ADA? And how do you train pair transit drivers as well? Uh, I think I can take the part about the shelters, but uh, I'm going to need you to repeat the uh, the exact locations of the shelter, the, the intersection, and the direction of travel, if you could. Livernois and Grand River going east downtown. Um, Grand River, yeah. Grand River, huh? Grand um, River, the Grand, Grand River. River, the Grand River bus at Livernois. Yes, right. uh, the Grand River side going east 
It was a full shelter. Now it's only seats there. On the other side going west, is nothing there. <laughs> uh, just like on Livernois, uh going north, it's a shelter there. But then going south on the other side is nothing there. Not a seat or anything for anybody to sit on. OK. Uh, there's, uh, we have to look up what happened to these shelters. Uh, there's a chance they may have been hit by a vehicle. Mm -hmm. They may also, if they were the old style shelters, they may be getting replaced with the new ones. So, uh, but we don't take away shelters just to take them away. So uh, we'll look into what happened to that and we'll uh, uh, we'll reach out to Ayobami and let her know what's happening and then she can reach out to you. Okay, and we still got trans dad, dev, or whatever it is. Uh, with the paratransit, I think they got 70% of the service. Uh, is Simone here? Uh, I can I can answer that. I can answer that, uh, um, Steve. So uh, just to help, let, let's let's round out the shelter situation. So one of the good news, one of the good things about the shelters, is that after we went through that ARPA replacement fund, mm -hmm. uh, the public let us know what we needed to do with the with the money. So we have a big chunk of that money going towards fixing all the problems that you're talking about. So we're in the process of doing a full assessment of what's out there, taking a look at what the new shelter will look like, and pretty soon we'll start replacing and you'll see more shelters. As far as the ones that you're referring to there, we've had some uh, unusual situations. I know there's one on Grand River. It is a glass shelter that uh, it got hit. And um, with those shelters, we don't have immediate replacements because they were part of the streetscape program. Um, so there are a lot of the nice ones that are getting hit, but we don't have replacements. So we may be putting up some of the older shelters just to get through the winter until we really find a replacement. But we are on the shelter situation. And as Mr. Petronik said, we are not taking any shelters down for any, you know, any business reason. Um, so there may be an accident or some things going on. Um, as far as the placement of a shelter versus a seat, uh, that's going to be part of the the funding that was approved. Remember, not only we got we we put enough funding in there for almost 300 shelters, which we only have about 199 now, but we also put a lot of money in for uh, almost two or 300 seat additional seats. So we look forward to it. Just be patient. I know the bad weather is going to be coming. Not I'm not going to call it bad weather. I'm going to call it cold weather. You know, the cold <laughs> weather is going to be coming. So we won't, we'll, we'll do, be doing more of an assessment during that time. But once the weather breaks, hopefully we'll have something um, for everybody to see. Um, as far as paratransit, I know if, if Mr. Staley is on, because what you're referring to anybody is. Did anybody follow y'all home? Who was that? Was that Stephanie? Please, uh, someone needs to be muted. Someone needs to be muted. I think muted. it was Stephanie. Oh, okay. Well, she still needs to be muted. Stephanie, can you mute, please? Up oh, there, you go. Oh yeah, we're going to be having a discussion tomorrow, aren't we? Anyway, so so um, as far as paratransit goes, um, as far as clean, courteous, new standards, uh, the RRP that we put out and the responses that came in, uh, it's quite clear that what we're requesting is a little different than what is in place today, coupled with the potential. Um, and again, it went to city council. It's going to be going to city council on Monday, so I can only get into it so much. But based on what we have um, put forward, you'll be seeing uh, clean new standards. Uh, the requirements on training, customer service, role play is all part of uh, the new staff that we have uh, brought in. Um, and Mr. Staley, again, I don't know if he's on, uh, could, could uh, speak a little bit more to that. I believe yes. Okay. Mr. Staley is on um, specifically as it relates to both the uh, vehicle standards and the uh, driver training standards. As uh, Mr. Oglesby indicated, those have been uh, enhanced, uh, much more muscular than in the past. Uh, specifically as it relates to the driver's training, uh, DDOT required in the, um, in the uh, RFP request for proposal. Um, that some of the components in the classroom include uh, disability awareness and sensitivity training, passenger assistance techniques, uh, defensive driving, and a number of other um, topics related to uh, DDOT paratransit policies and procedures. Uh, we will have in place uh, a manager of contracts 
who will be exclusively dedicated um, to reviewing compliance issues as it relates to the contractors. Um, and that person will also be doing vehicle inspections, driver file audits, and, um, pardon me, and, um, and we'll also be doing uh, both scheduled uh, service checks out in the field and random service checks out in the field. Um, he will not be the only one involved in that process. I will be involved in that process as well. Very, very good. And, and, and the part about, let me answer your other one because I heard you throw the word transdev out there. <laughs> um, we're going to be bringing uh, to city council the results of the RFP for the providers. As far as what is going to be um, overseen by DDOT, we have kept our promise by keeping in house, taking in house customer service, dispatch, scheduling, and everything that goes under it, managing eligibility, managing contract operations, and outreach, and, and having an outreach specialist. Currently, all that is under, D, uh, under TransDev that is going to come to us. The portion that's going to be going to city council is your request for the providers. As you know, uh, the public said uh, there, you know, you can take, take it in house, but you want to give uh, um, local companies, especially Detroit based companies, an opportunity to provide the actual service itself. So we put the RFP out um, as I had mentioned in a very short summary. So I'll say the exact same thing I said at the last meeting. Uh, the results came in and they're before the board. Uh, the way that the summary looks was a little misleading because it said 30% people's express, 70% transdev. Transdev submitted a submission for the provider piece only. So their duties are completely different than they were before because they submitted it partnering with Delray United, Mo Transportation and Big Star. So that 70% is really those three companies. So really the, pro the providers are People Express, Delray United, Mo Transportation and Big Star LLC. Those are the ones that are providing the actual service. We, will ha we have a manager of contract operations within DDOT overseeing all of that. And those three companies, instead of submitting them separately which they had the opportunity to do, um, chose to submit it through TransDev. There's various reasons for that because um, there are city requirements that are uh, typically put in an RFP that a lot of small companies just can't do, insurances, all of that stuff. So that was the purpose of that. But the function itself is going to be completely different. So I know people here, TransDev, nothing's changed. I can guarantee you something changed because I can put up that board <laughs> chart and tell you. So, so I, but, but I understand some people here, TransDev, and they don't, that when they see the new structure, they'll understand that truly the providers are Delray, Mo Transportation, and Big Star under them. And we will be managing that coupled with People Express, who People Express put in separately. So when you see the organizational charts and I, I, I compare them, you'll see that we did exactly what we said we would do. Okay. Another thing is um, State Fair Transit Center on time to be 2023? Yeah, it's, it's on time. You know, it's funny you say that. Um, I was just on the call the other day. They're moving, in order to move forward, and I'm glad you, you brought this up, and in order to move forward, we are going to be... Um, doing something with the current transit hub. We have, we're not ready to announce it yet, but there's gonna be construction through the current hub, which is linked to the new transit center. So we're going to have a like alternate location for people for a temporary period until it's built. But yes, it's, it's ready to go. And uh, I expect to see it pop up next year. Okay. And remember what I said at the beginning, um, I do need you to get in touch with me. See if you got a date somewhere the first two weeks in November so we could meet there at Motor City and honor Mr. Cunningham and give you a big thank you for the things that you have done that you could do for us. Uh, DPP, Transit Justice Team, appreciates all of you. And uh, you all have a good evening and stay safe. Thank you very much. My staff will reach out to you. You have me at Casino. Next uh, question. All right.
Thank you, Mr. Chella. The next hand up is Mr. Verse. Okay, I can say uh, good evening to all of you and the director. Uh, I concur with most things that everyone has said so far. And I would like to add when it comes to uh, the transdev issue, because that's the way to nail it down most. Uh, I think it's gonna pass. I, well, I guess maybe I have more information than a lot of people. And I'm curious as to why it had to be a five-year contract. Could it have been less? And personally, I think it should be less, like a one or two year, because it's really an experiment. See how it works. I know you say you're gonna make it work. Hey, things don't always go as we plan, as we're fully aware. Other than that, I support what I've learned wholeheartedly about that. I am concerned about a few other things though. One is, is there going to be sensitivity training for drivers? Because I've noted, uh, how should I put it, some problems. Some drivers seem angry, especially on the Grand River. I don't know what the, exactly the problem is. I know that drivers don't like it. They feel that it's dangerous, but I, don't see any alternative. I mean, I don't think when they signed on in their employment contract, there was an I will not take any risk ever clause. But I also realized that your hands are bound to a certain extent by contract negotiations and certain laws on the books. But I'm asking to see if something can be done. All right, thank you, Mr. Verse. Um, as I take this one, um, are you talking about training? Uh, we're actually finishing up a round of sensitivity and de-escalation training with our operators right now. Um, that training, we usually do some enhancement and refresher training once a year. And that is one of the areas we do with these, uh, sensitivity in terms of just regular passenger interaction, um, dealing with people with disabilities and de-escalation situations. So that is a, something we take very important, take very serious. And I'm asking you, anytime that you come across an operator that is not showing sensitivity, please let us know. So we, that's what we, that's what part of our reasons we have service inspectors so that they can go out on the road and look into that. So please let us know. Um, it, very good. And if I could piggyback on that, Mr. Verse, especially as it pertains to the operators on Grand River, I was on the bus not too long ago. I ride up and down and I rode the Grand River route. I was on the bus and I saw what the operators have to deal with. And I saw what the riders have to deal with, with the operator. And, you know, it's tough times. Uh, uh, we, we are going to train our driver, continue to train our drivers on sensitivity training. They are, it, it's all about customer service, but I wish I could train the riders, some of the riders on sensitivity training, because when, when a rider gets on is really rude to uh, an operator, it's really, you know, they're human also. They trained to, um, you know, behave a certain way, but when I have them working overtime, really pushing it because we don't have enough operators that are out there doing a, a service for us. And, you know, and, and then they expect the same respect that's given. And I, I watched it. Sometimes it doesn't happen. People get on and they, they're, uh, some of them are pretty rude. So uh, I'm not making any excuse for the operators. I think sensitivity training is, is needed, but we have a, uh, we need to make sure we stick with this customer bill of rights where people have to just, we all have to be kind to one another. Um, the question about TransDev and or the providers, because again, the RFP isn't just about TransDev, it's People's Express, TransDev, Moe's, Delray. I mean, you know, it, it's not, people just keep saying one word. 
Um, the reason why you would put a five-year contract in place is because of the requirements that we are putting in. Everybody said they want newer vehicles. They want clean vehicles. They want more. They, the, the operators should get more money. Well, in order for a company to invest and do everything that we're asking, typically the first year, they don't make as much money. And then the following years, they make the money back for their investment. So it wouldn't be fair to have somebody pay so much money that they make no money the first year. And then the second year we say, goodbye, thanks for your investment. That's typically why uh, it's a five-year contract. I will also say that within a five-year contract, there's opportunities to adjust. So though it's a five-year contract, um, depending on performance, there are a lot of things in the contract that give us the power and ability to make some adjustments. Um, but yeah, I did hear the concern about a five-year contract, but that's typically what is done for longevity. This is not a test. This is the real deal. We're taking it no matter what. So we're taking the responsibility. If these providers aren't the ones, then we go get other providers. But we are taking um, full responsibility for the customer service dispatch scheduling ma managing eligibility. Thank you, Mr. Verse. The next hand up is Stephen Howring. How's it going? Um, I have a few questions about the uh, People's Express. My understanding, the People's Express, it operates a lot in um, Southwest Oakland. I know Commerce, Milford, Lyon. Um, just kind of worried because the that most of their experience is rural transit. They don't really have experience in urban transit. Um, that's my first thing. And my uh, second thing is um, about the low-income fare program. I'm not opposed to low-income fare, but 10 million for a study, that, that just sounds way too steep. I mean, you could almost like give every homeless shelter in Detroit a bus pass for like, 2% of that cost. I'm just curious why it's that much, because I mean, with the, how much the system's struggling, I mean, 10 million is a lot of money for something that, I mean, I'm just curious. Maybe I misread it or something. I can I take, I can take the the first the, the second one about the low income fare. So, the low income fare was uh, discussed during the upper replacement funds, and it ended up that uh, people were so interested in it that we actually took it out of the upper plan and put it in DDOT reimagined to be able to move it forward quicker. There was no ten million dollar dollar amount. I believe the ten million that you're talking about is the old study that indicated that if we moved forward with a low income fare, it would cost DDOT $10 million. Wow. That, yeah, that's a lot of money. That, that is annually. And when we were typically getting $20 million a year in fares, that's half, that's 50%. Well, right now we're not even collecting 50% in fares, right? We're only collecting eight to 10 million. So if we're only collecting eight to 10 million, but it costs 10 million to do the low income fare study, that leaves us with zero income. Um, I don't believe that that's totally accurate because those are old statistics pre-pandemic. So what we're proposing is to do a new study with the new structure, with the new ridership service mile information and everything else and see what the true cost would be to DDOT and then we'll announce it. So no, $10 million is not, it, it is a lot of money, but no, that, that's, those are old statistics and old numbers and that we're not moving forward with. Um, as far as People Express's um, submission, People Express uh, went through the process just like the TransDev group did. And um, they proved that they have the ability to provide the service that was required in the RFP. Uh, only 30% of it though, and then the 70% would go to the other side. Uh, we are confident that they have the ability to provide the transportation. I've heard great things about that from my work in the county here. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Great, and the next hand up is Stephen Boyle. Stephen Boyle, are you available? Hello. We can hear you, but there's a lot of background noise. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm at work. I'm going to try and move to another space. Okay. Yes. Um, see if there's something even quieter. Okay. Okay. That's not. Yeah. Why don't, why don't, we don't come we back keep, to you? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the next hand up is Ingrid Green. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ingrid Green. Uh, I am the executive director of Drones for Girls. Thank you for setting this time for people to make comments. Um, I, I really just wanted to ask about a challenge for Detroit high school students to design a, uh, a bus shelter. Um, they, these kids uh, have grown up with, well, some of them anyway, with a tablet in their hands and they might be able to envision some things that maybe we're not seeing here or uh, maybe they've been somewhere else that they've seen it and uh, it would just be a cool way for, um, problem solving to be happening, maybe in conjunction with something they're doing in their classrooms um, that would really encourage their parents. And it's something to promote about how Detroit is doing things differently or um, is moving into another uh, phase or era. Um, and I, I've, I've emailed about it and I've, I've asked a question or two about it. And I haven't heard whether or not uh, there hasn't been any response. So I, I guess I, I thought I would hop on here and ask uh, what was the feedback? What was the discussion about that? Y'all got some big fish to fry. <laughs> I've been on this call for a minute. Okay, And, and that uh, is time. So you want to give us the opportunity to uh, respond right. to some of those? Sure. Actually, Ayabami, if she's so long, could you find out who she's been sending that information to? Uh, the Ingrid? Yes, Ingrid. Okay. Ingrid, are you go still ahead there? And unmute. Go ahead and unmute and let us know where the information that you sent is going to. Yeah, on, on March 18th, I sent that. I emailed the idea to uh, to Mr. Oglesby. Um, and I have brought it up before and since in one of these calls. So it sounds like maybe need to, if we can huh. get it emailed again or. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, if, if she said it's March 18th, we'll take a look at it, it and okay. see. It is quite possible. Or or if you, Ayabami, if you could get her uh, contact information. I can, can do that. To her. Um, the, I'm very familiar with the bus shelter uh, design layout situations. Um, we are in the process of figuring out what we're going to do with the shelters overall. Typically, the shelters are made by their standard made by one or two companies and they look a certain way. Typically, when you have some that look a little different, it's a separate program like arts, um, arts and transit program or something like that. So we'd be definitely be interested to um, take a look at that and see um, how it could blend in and get back to you. Unfortunately, I, I don't know why. Um, it hasn't got to where it needs to be, but we'll take a look at it. You have our attention. You gave us the information. So uh, I promise you, I will go back and look at it. And if I don't find anything, I'll make sure staff gets back to you to grab the, the data and information. That sounds great. It's a wonderful opportunity and I hope the kids get to do it. And uh, it's not about promising that something will get built or things will be designed that way. It's just a chance to give them a voice. That's it. No, I, I I love the idea. I think it I think it's fun and fantastic. I love doing those things. So, um, anyway, I can uh, jump in and help and assist or talk to them. I'd love to do that too. So, 
Let's see what we got. We have, um, I guess we can pause here. We had some comments from uh, Marguerite that she wanted to me to read out loud. Um, so give me a moment because as you know, the chat has been busy. So I got to kind of go back a little bit. So the last one, hopefully it won't move on me. Uh, she's commenting that not all disability persons who use ADA paratransit, someone from the mayor's office talked on Tuesday before city council evening meeting. And a month ago, I was left behind due to the training not to pull in close to the curb. And this was in the second lane. On Grand and, River. And I know the second, the original uh, comment was she wanted to know who the new ADA person was. And um, I'm going to read back. Uh, that's Lakenya Sheffield. Um, the, the contact information is in the chat, but I'll repeat that as well, 313-590-2939. And I believe she may be on if she wants to comment any further on that, but that's Lakenya Sheffield, the new ADA coordinator, 313-590-2939. And uh, Ms. Marguerite, I believe those were team. No, there, was there another there, one? Okay, see, I told um, you it's, it's moving fast. You wanna? I see another one that says, uh, uh, let's see, a month ago, she's left behind due to a trainee that didn't pull in close to the curb. It was in the second lane at Lodge and Grand River. Okay, that was the first one. Okay, I just cut off the last part. Right. Lodge and, okay. That's all right, but that that that's information. No, that thank we you. Need to get to Steve mm -hmm. at uh, HFH. Uh, why is a stop on Woodward a block from Manchester and Highland Park? And it's a vacant building. It's a dangerous stop. So that's something we need to look into. So that's good that she's alerting us to this. Uh, we'll be able to. Will, will we be able to um, print off all of her comments so my staff can take all of this stuff and uh, take a look at it? Yes, these are saved, and I can uh, I'll forward them to you. Yeah, forward them. This forward is to them specific to, parts. Yes. Yeah, all yeah. of her concerns. Forward them to both Steve and uh, Melvin, okay. because she's bringing she's bringing some of this stuff to our attention, and we need to look into it. Um, we don't have the the answers right now because I have to look into it and to give her a proper answer. We don't want to, you know, just wing it. But I think that's the only one she had for now, right? That's all I see. Uh Miss Marguerite, you know, feel free in chat if you have another one, but we will uh we will get those answered for you and we'll follow back up. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. You got it. Okay. Um Stephen Boyle, are you still available? I am available. Am I in a quieter space for you? That's a little better, yes. Okay, good. Um, I've been, uh, well, the past few months I turned around and started using my bicycle an awful lot more because the, uh, the bus was just not so easy to, to deal with. Um, it, it was a matter with the bike racks, and I was like noticing that some of the bike racks have been being replaced, and I'm happy for that. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm concerned about the approach of cold weather and our shelter program and, you know, how the shelters are. And uh, just today, I was like listening to people saying, why are they removing shelters at the time when we need to have more shelters put in? So I'm looking forward to that improvement showing up soon. Um, the, uh, well, so to say, I'm glad to see that we've got more drivers in training, some 40 some odd. Driver, drivers and training is a good thing to hear. Uh, I am concerned about our night service. I've been uh, picking up more night hours, and that means trying to get from downtown out to Wyoming and Speckle in the middle of the night, which is nearly impossible uh, without walking about 20 minutes in the dark. So that's about what I'm doing right now is, you know, if I get out at 10.30 at night, then I'm hopping I can't even get the Franco bus at that hour, really. I'm getting uh, a Dexter and then walking the rest of the way. So that's what happens with the people when, when the buses pull up at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever it is, they stop running. The people that work long hours wind up kind of 
doing what they can for the remainder of the trip. Thanks. Mr. Boyle, do you use the uh, uh, a bus tracker app? Have you tried I do use the DDOT bus tracker. It has helped me immeasurably. I also use the transit app because I, which I do appreciate the crowdsourcing that the transit app offers. I would hope that the drivers, if their tracking system is not functioning, would actually turn on the transit app and then track their own driving if possible. But that doesn't seem to be any training that's actually happening for drivers. If there is a, I don't even know that the drivers understand how to turn their tracking device on on their bus because a number of drivers I've said, your tracking is not on, and they're like, I don't know how to turn it on. So maybe that could be included in some training. So when you say the tracker is not tracking, are you saying it's not tracking in the transit app or it's not tracking in the DDOT tracker? In the DDOT tracker, it's not there. And then the bus shows up and it's like, oh, look at this. So yeah. it, it doesn't happen very often. It yeah. just happens from time to time. Yes, and, and, and thank you for bringing that up. We, um, we actually have realized that and we've been working together with Clever Devices to fix that. Our customer service team has been watching, tracking the tracker and where there's issues with, I call it a ghost bus where it's not there, then it just pops up. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. So it was happening, happening more, it's getting better, but it's not perfect. And if that does happen, please pick up the phone and call customer service and let, let them know. Uh, if, yeah. if it's closed, leave a message so we can do a point in time and go back and, and fine tune it. But we're still fine tuning it. We're trying to get it as good as possible as we go into the cold weather. Um, as, far as, the, as far as the night service that you mentioned, um, you should see better service after the last scheduled change because we did add a little more service in the afternoons. But again, if we don't have operators and they don't show up, you're going to see that hole. You know, it doesn't matter how much service we add. If we don't have drivers, it's not going to happen. So really, our push is once we get more drivers, you'll see more steady service. Our, our gig economy is moving much more into flexible work schedules, and that's making uh, the flow to the different hours than the core business hours very possible for a lot of people. Yes. Just, uh, just reminding you of that. And uh, I have mentioned it to the drivers to please have somebody at the transit center get the tracking device enabled. I don't know if you have any technicians available at the tra at the transit center that could uh, assist in doing anything like that, you know, small fix at a moment. But uh, we'll look at that. Thank you for the information. We'll look at that. We're working hard to, to, to get some things going. But there's one thing that's concerning me. That's the second person that has said people are saying we're removing shelters. We're not removing any shelters. They're getting hit. Then we have to remove them. Um, but we are not in the process of shifting or moving shelters out, especially going into the cold weather. But uh, Steve, when we have some time, let's talk about that and figure out what's going on. Okay. Thank you. The next hand up is Colin Hanjinski. Great. Thank you. Uh, Colin Hansinski, I'm a downtown resident. First, I'd like to say that I appreciate you all being here and the work that you all have been doing uh, running a transit agency over the last two and a half years. I know it's been very challenging, so thank you for that. Uh, Sunday morning, I woke up and I saw a lot of cones, people running in the streets and buses parked in odd places. So I figured that we were going to have some uh, transit disruptions. So I got on the DDOT Twitter. I didn't see any updates about the marathon. I looked at the queue line. There were no updates. Um, I checked the websites. Um, the only uh, service disruption bulletin on the DDOT page of the city site is the Claremont detour. And um, so I actually got most of my information from the marathon website that said that the streets would be slowly reopening until about uh, two o'clock. So I waited to go to Wayne State until later on in the afternoon. I was waiting at Grand Circus Park and waiting, waiting, waiting. I eventually mogoed to school. And on my way back at about quarter to five, I got on the Woodward bus heading back downtown. 
And when we got to Martin Luther King, the driver said, okay, this is our last stop. Everyone needs to get off. Well, by that time, all the streets were reopened. So everyone was, was pretty confused. He said that he thought the MAC bus was going to Rosa Parks, but wasn't exactly sure. So we had elderly folks, people with bags. Um, and so a lot of people didn't know how they were going to get downtown. So thankfully, I was able to walk the two, three blocks and MoGo back downtown without any issues. But uh, the communication around the marathon, which was no surprise, uh, but the communication about service disruptions around the marathon was not great. And that also seemed to re be reflective on the information that the driver had as well. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you for that information. We'll get we'll get the planning group together. Steve, were you going to respond to that? No. Maybe not. I, um, this is Zonda, I, sir. I will uh, work with Steve to see what happened with that, and uh, we will. <clears throat> excuse me, I was off air because I was choking a little bit, but we will work with the uh, scheduling division to see what happened and make sure that every the public is informed of the future. <clears throat> Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to answer the door. Um, I, I just, uh, yeah, uh, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll catch up on this later if, if you don't, yeah, if I don't yeah, worry. yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. it. It's it was it was poor communication during the marathon, mm -hmm. with the lack of information on our website to let people know what was happening, and the lack of coordination with the operator because it looks like the operator when the street did open up did not continue all the way to rosa parks he let people off so i think it's a combination of possible miscommunication um, but we typically have these um pretty much down to a science so we'll do our investigation and look into it and thank you for bringing it to our attention yeah, the, the, the detour was different this year and the whole course was different this year so uh uh, they were trying to uh, showcase different neighborhoods during the marathon, so it, it made yeah. it moved around midtown, which it normally didn't do. We will look into it specifically because even if it was even it was, if it was different, we needed to know. So we'll look at it and we'll we'll uh, sharpen it up next time. All right, thank you. Next hand up is a number ending in one six nine. Hello? Yes. Um, I got the flyer from Cunningham and I just wanted to um say that um in more hooded areas, there's no um, you know, seating areas for people to wait on the buses. The buses is is not running. Um, you know, I feel like they not running long enough. Um, I've been waiting out for the bus. Um the Hamilton, the uh, Route 23, and buses that's supposed to be there every hour is like, sometimes it's like they come every two or three hours. Um, I feel like it's only two buses en route at the same time, because usually when one comes, one is going. And I feel like, you know, it should be, you know, more buses on the route so that people don't have to wait, you know, as long. You know, people be having stuff to do, doctor's appointments, jobs, and things like that. And when the is late that make people late um they not clean um the the older bus drivers have more of an attitude where the younger drivers are more impatient um and sometimes the younger drivers are both um th that's about it really um yeah that, that that's about it All right, thank you for your comment. Yes, sometimes there are only two buses on routes. That may be all that is on there now that we've done our service changes. We do try to keep at least one going eastbound, one going westbound, or one going north and one going south. Um, please look at the tracker. That'll help you understand of where we are and what bus is coming and what time they're coming. Um, for our operators, like I said earlier, we're always trying to help 
improve our operators with enhancement training, which is done several times a year to better serve our customers. Okay, thank you. The next hand up I see is Sheila Dorsey. Sheila Dorsey. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, there we go, go ahead. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Sheila Dorsey. I am a D.TEO out of Shoemaker. I know Deputy Director Mr. Barkley is familiar with me. I, Mr. Oglesby, we've crossed paths. I don't know if we've officially met. And I saw a flash of Mr. Malley, who may be familiar with me. And I thank you all for the opportunity. And first, I want to start on a positive note and acknowledge the changes and the encouraging uh, motivational messages that operators have been receiving over our clever devices. And I don't know if that's a part of the DDOT reimagined, but it's a great idea because it helps with the level of stress when you can touch or a positive message comes across. Uh, that's the positive note, but I want to speak briefly to the debacle of the marathon on Sunday. I was in that gridlock stuck for two and a half hours on Grand River, which had been converted to a two-way street between Washington Boulevard and Griswold, Woodward. I had four pages of extensive reroutes that didn't make a difference. My 10 hours and 25 minute route turned into essentially um, one round trip on Gratiot and that ended my day as I was stuck and then led to the transit center to wait for further direction. Something happened, uh, communication, the ball was dropped with DPD, which had us sequestered on that little corridor for two and a half hours. It's unfortunate in two parts. Uh, passengers became angry with drivers. They were videotaping us. They were telling us that we were violating our contract. I don't know where it all came from, but we uh, were submitted to a lot of abuse as we stood frozen on that small little corridor there. Uh, that was time. Okay. Mr. Barkley, were you responding? No, yeah, thank you, okay. Ms. Dorsey. Yes, we are familiar. Um, no, that's not part of D. I reimagine with the messages. It's just something dispatch has started to put out there because we know any we need to do things to help encourage you guys out there because you deal with a lot on the road. You know, they always tell everybody safety is number one concern. So anything that can help improve your morale, we are trying to do. Um, and as you said, with the marathon, we were at the mercy of DPD. Um, we are working to get better communication for next year's marathon so that we won't have those issues again. Thank you very much. Uh, the next hand up is Reverend Dr. Cook. Good afternoon. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not even sure where to start. Let me just say this. First, they need to cancel that stupid marathon. Just cancel it all over there. And I'm done with that. Now, as far as Metro Lift is concerned, I didn't get to church Sunday. And even though I was on a program, at the church I was going to. Fortunately, I could get through to them on the phone and let them know I couldn't come. So I've got an issue with Metro Lift, and it's a, it's a big issue. And I put in the chat room my contact number and my email address for Ms. Bohr. 
So at TransDev, because I want to do a formal complaint, not just tell me we're looking into it, we're going to take care of it. I'm going to do a formal complaint, and I want to know how to go about doing that. Thank you very much. I'm done. Thank yeah, you, Reverend. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, good evening. Uh, yeah, I got some information about that marathon and what happened. And it turns out that we were given one set of detours. And then without telling us, they changed it to another set of street closures. So our original detours didn't work for the revised street closures. And I'm sure that also affected paratransit. And uh, the people apologized to us but it was too late. It didn't matter because the things were already messed up. And uh, all we can do now is apologize that we didn't know and try to do better next year. Ms. Moore? I guess I do, I do have one other thing to say. I've been back in Detroit for 15 years and every year that mess, mess, marathon has caused me problems. So this time, I'm not wasn't surprised. Just a different kind of problem. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Moore was going to kind of comment uh, uh, on on and then, but more importantly, yeah, the marathon was interesting. It was actually the first one I experienced, and I was stuck on Jefferson and couldn't get where I needed to go. So uh, I felt your pain. I felt everybody's pain, and I was probably saying the same things you all all were saying to yourselves trying to get where I needed to go. Uh, Simone, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, Director, thank you. Um, sincerest apologies, Reverend Cook. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience that you experienced on Sunday. Um, of course, our objective is to provide a safe and reliable service at Transdale or for the Detroit Metro Lift Service. I have added in the chat the formal complaint phone number. Uh, it's 313-208. 7363, and that's option two. We will look into the complaint to see exactly how it um, derailed and follow up with you. And I have your contact information also. In addition, I will promise that once Simone gets that information, she'll get it to me and we'll work together to make sure that uh, it's handled properly. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Marguerite, your hand's up next. Did we address your comments in the chat or do you have additional comments? Thank you. Good evening. Um, I would like to add something about the marathon because because this is the first marathon after the pandemic. And I wish that that the media would have that's a better job because because there was some miscommunication between the 
in the milk farm coordinators so hopefully hopefully next year we need to figure out a way to to communicate to the media and to our of the social media platform and one more thing Mr. Ogilvy, please please email me because there is something that you that you need to know about about me personally yes but professionally no so please contact me by email thank you i'm done Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely um, reach out and get in touch with you and we'll uh, give me uh, whatever information you would need. Also, again, back to the marathon. Uh, it was clear based on what Mr. Petronik said, there was a communication gap that we could not control. We don't control the marathon. We push hard to get the information. We get that information. We set up shop and we go about our business. Unfortunately, we went about our business with the wrong plan. <laughs> and it obviously not only frustrated the riders, but it frustrated the operators, which you just heard, and it frustrated me. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to make sure that we uh, take go about it differently next year. And we're going to go to work closer with DPD and open up the communication outwards instead of waiting to get it inward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The next hand up is Robert Barksdale. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, first time caller. And I was calling in regards to air purification on the buses. I'm sure you guys have gone through this before, but what's your current plan and are there any options for the future? Different options, I should say. Okay. Good evening. Uh, this is Gio Joy from uh, Baseball Maintenance. Uh, right now, DDOT is uh, testing on an air purification system on a couple of coaches on a yes. uh, various I, I, I can answer. I th Did something just happen? Did, did the Gio freeze? Can y'all hear me? He was he was talking, and then we heard you. Yeah, I don't know. He, I think he went on, uh, but I, I can I no, can he, continue and pretend like I was GL. How's I, that? I think I think he's okay. I, I think mm -hmm. he's okay. I just I just paused. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, just uh, just chiming in uh, on the air purification system. Uh, we are looking into a few vendors right now. And we are testing it on a couple of our coaches right now and uh, taking the readings out of how air, air ionization technique is working. In parallel to that, we are get, uh, testing some air, air filter system that is provided by the OEM vendors and to comparing the pricing and performance right now. So hopefully by end of next month, we will have some data for you available. Thank you. And okay. to, to follow up on that, um, our goal is to put air purification filters on all of our buses. 
So once we come to the conclusion of this pilot to see which one's the right one, we will be putting them on because it was part of uh, what the public asked for and we have the funding set aside for it. Understood. Uh, is there any way to uh, get involved with the project? Um, Pertaining to, I don't understand the question. I, I recently started an air purification company myself. I'm a, a minority supplier in the city that was just interested in, like I said, it was first time on the call. Okay. Just to see if there was any possibilities of working with your team to understand your needs and try to help my city grow better. What hey, you're uh, you uh, providing. Yeah. Go, go, go ahead. You got it, Gio. And you know what? Hey, um, I was. Uh, um, do you mind sharing your contact information and I'll reach out to you directly? I will put it in the chat. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. That works Great. as we have about nine minutes. Go ahead, Kristen. Uh, yep. Uh, the next hand up is Norma P. Hello. No, yep, go ahead. Well, hello, everyone. I um, I put the information in the chat. Um, my phone was kind of acting up a bit, but um, let me see if I can say it. I just had three little questions about um, um, question about switch routes or transfer routes. I don't know what they're called. When the Grand River becomes the eight mile at a certain point and when the Hamilton becomes the Fort bus at a certain point. Are there other routes that do that? And if so, can riders get a list? Because I've experienced um, huge delays on both of those buses when they switch those routes. That's one question. And then the next question, it looks like customer service or comment uh, issue has been brought up that, um, you know, I just wanted to reiterate that the training, it looks like it might be helpful to, for drivers to have customer training um, again. I know uh, it was mentioned that they do have it when they, I guess, when they get hired, but I've been experiencing and seeing a lot of rudeness on the buses. Um, and lastly, is there a policy for letting homeless and other people um, unable to pay fare, ride free, uh, or, or is that left to discretion of the bus driver? You know, I saw where the bus driver on the, where we're having a bad day, clearly, and um, she passed up like three people. And then when a homeless person got on, uh, she was fumbling for like an, another dollar or whatever. I wish I had it. And she didn't let her ride. And I just thought that was so rude. It was cold outside. So is there a policy in place like after 35 degrees or below, they, they can ride free? Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Oh, go ahead, Steve. You can, you can answer the interlining question yeah. first. Yeah. I'll answer that. the interlining question. So there are some routes that operate as pairs like throughout the day. And those would be like the one Werner, Five Van Dyke, and the 194 and 23 Hamilton. So those operate regularly as pairs. And on weekends, uh, we also have uh, the, uh, uh, the Van Dyke and the Dexter. I think this is just on Saturdays, but uh, there's also interlines that just happen maybe once or twice a week or, or a few trips a day uh, and late at night or what we do with the six mile, seven mile, eight mile buses. So uh, we're, uh, we're trying to uh, get these interlines so that they're all on the same garage. Like we moved uh, the, uh, uh, the Hamilton bus over to Gilbert, so it would be in the same garage with the Fort bus, and that does simplify the operation. Uh, but when uh, when we did the uh, the service cut in November, it all got tangled up uh, so so much that uh, we uh, we we've advanced to have it fixed maybe in January. But but there will still be interlines, and uh, interlines do save buses when they operate. Uh, for example, the uh, the Fort bus uh, wouldn't be able to run with one bus, and the Hamilton bus would run with two buses. But together, uh, we can run them with three buses. 
instead of having two on the Hamilton and uh, two on the Ford, uh, because the Ford is just a little bit too long to have this one bus on. So that's why we do interlines, uh, but uh, uh, when we get to the new network in DDOT reimagined, we hope our interlines will be a lot simpler. The ones I mentioned are the main ones that uh, that we have, but as I said, there are some that only happen a few times a day or a few times a week uh, that uh, uh, that I can't really list right now. Okay, so there's um, just want to be clear what you said. So there is nowhere to go to see where these interlines are, and then also when um, there was a driver that you know showed me his list of you know uh, his his route schedule, and he said, "See this Grand River." bus says that it's out there, but it's actually not. So if you look on the app, that Grand River bus says it's out there, but it's not. It really just turned into an eight mile. So someone waiting for the Grand River could wait like an hour, maybe two hours when it turned into a Grand River. So that's that's the only if you're on the issue app, I saw. If you're on the app, the app knows what bus it becomes. So it won't tell you that that bus is coming if it's not. Okay, the app has all the scheduling information. For example, if you're on a waiting for the Hamilton bus and the bus you're waiting for is on 4th Street, it knows that that bus is headed your way uh, because it's all in the schedule. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone that can answer the, the policy about the homeless and customers that ride the bus and say it was like 35 degrees or less? Is it left to the, to the discretion of the driver? Because I feel like if they're in a bad mood, like this one was, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I can go ahead and answer that. Uh, Tony Benson here, the Assistant uh, Director of Operations. Uh, so the, the DDOT policy is that that all passengers should pay their exact fare. Uh, we do we do leave it up to the discretion of uh, of the driver, but the expectation is that everyone everyone pays their fare. Thank you. Great, thank. Oh. Did you have something to add? Okay, we have uh, just enough time for our last first time hand up. We're going to do one round tonight, and that's the number ending in four four one. If you have a comment number ending four four one, we have a, like one minute left. Okay. Let's um if they uh hello. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, hello. My name is uh Greg Woods. Uh Cunningham gave me a flyer. I would like to comment on one first the buses. They take too long. I, I can't I take the commute every day and buses take a long time. And I also like to comment on there's been a lot of accidents out here in these streets. I see them daily. There was like three accidents last night. What is the police going to do about these people out here driving crazy? When you get out here and drive in the streets, you got to drive for yourself and other people that's not thinking. So that's, that's, that's what I'm speaking on. You know what I'm saying? I think we need to have more police out here on the streets, patrolling the streets, making sure people are driving safely. You know what I'm saying? It's too many people out here getting into accidents, losing their life, families. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm commenting on. Thank you for your input. Um, uh, we do know that there is an issue. Um, DPD has been looking at this and they take this very seriously. As a matter of fact, I think they have a whole program to try to stop the speeding, the racing, and a lot of other things that are going on within the streets. And we try to work with them to the best uh, of our ability, along with our own um, transit police. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that one is really difficult to, to handle because there's a lot going on in the streets. Um, so we just have to be safe and be careful. 
and tell our operators to be safe and be careful. Our goal is to make sure when you're on our bus, you're safe. And that's what we can, that's what we can focus on. Follow up on the executive director's comments. This is uh, Rich from Safety. Uh, safety does see transit police out there responding to incidents and accidents, as well as the Detroit Police Department. Sometimes they're both at an accident. So um, the Operations Control Center works with the law enforcement out there to, to dispatch uh, law enforcement uh, when and where needed. Thank you. That is all the time that we have uh, for tonight. Um, any unanswered questions in the chat, you know, we will, again, as we mentioned before, we have those um, saved and we'll follow up for any of those that we need to reach out personally, we'll do that. And any other new updates, we'll, of course, we'll bring that to that next uh, community input meeting. I do want to reserve this time if our, uh, Mr. Oglesby, would you like to do any other closing remarks? Yes, uh, one, I saw Lieutenant Cross was going to comment. If you'd like to, I want to give her opportunity to comment on that last. Uh... Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, I just want the caller to know that Transit Police does respond uh, uh, to um, all the calls on disturbances on the coaches and stuff. And we do assist DPD with um, some traffic enforcement in regards to the coaches. And if he sees uh, any violations or anything that he would like to report, please call that in to um, 911. And hopefully, the, if, it's, if it's transit related, it automatically comes to transit police. So um, we can be, we can address the issue as expeditiously as possible. Fantastic. And in closing, um, instead of my me doing the closing, I would like for Jasmine to do the closing because I miss her melodious voice so much. And we're all so used to her and customer service. I want the great and honorable Jasmine to, to uh, bid us a good night. Okay, everybody, that's it. That's all. Good night. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Right. Take care, guys.